Hey everyone, John Reed here, author of 50 Things to See with a Telescope. Welcome to the Homeschool Astronomy Challenge series. In this video, we're going to learn to identify the prominent spring constellations. This is Learn to Stargaze. With the winter constellation setting in the west at sunset, a new and exciting group of stars takes the stage. This part of the sky is far from the plane of our Milky Way galaxy, so the density of stars is much less. However, because there's less stars, gas, and dust in this direction, there are a lot of galaxies visible in this part of the sky. That, of course, assumes you have a telescope and dark skies, but it's for this reason that you may hear amateur astronomers refer to this as galaxy season. The first thing you notice when observing in the spring is the very prominent constellation Leo, accented by the bright star Regulus and the reverse question mark shaped asterism named the sickle, a tool for harvesting rain. Now, Leo is named for a lion in Greek mythology, but for some reason, I always see this constellation as a mouse, with the triangle part representing a mouse's head and the sickle representing his tail. If you remember back in video 15, Stars You Should Know, we used the stars in the handle of the Big Dipper to arc to Arcturus. Well, Arcturus is the brightest star in the constellation Boötes, which is an ox driver in Greek mythology. However, I typically just call this star pattern the ice cream cone. Moving on, as you'll recall, after we arc to Arcturus, we then spike to Spica, which is in the constellation Virgo, which is identified by this diamond pattern. Don't get confused though, there is a second diamond-shaped pattern in this area, and that's the constellation Corvus, which in mythology represents a crow. As an aside, there is another asterism here called the Spring Triangle, which connects the bright stars Arcturus, Regulus, and Spica. Next, onto the constellations Hercules and Corona Borealis, not to be confused with Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights. Hercules and Corona Borealis are, for the most part, visible during the spring and summer. Corona Borealis is fairly dim, except for one star, named Alfeca. However, Alfeca is not always the brightest star in the constellation. Every 80 years or so, for a matter of hours, a star called T Corona Borealis goes nova. No, not supernova, just regular nova. This is caused by a recurring flare-up of a white dwarf star. This nova is estimated to occur again in around 2026, or about six years from now. Hercules is known for the asterism called the Keystone, which can be used to find one of the most popular stargazing targets in the sky, the Great Globular Cluster in Hercules, which is visible in binoculars and small telescopes. There are several springtime constellations consisting of dim stars that are a challenge to view from the city. These include Coma Bernices, Hydra, Sextans, Crater, and Cancer. The only one of these that I really pay attention to is Cancer, because in the center of this constellation lies M44, or the Beehive Cluster, which is a beautiful target for both binoculars and small telescopes. If you're following along in the 50 Things to See with the Telescope Activity Workbook, the spring constellations are found on page 23. To complete this challenge, first trace the constellations with a pencil, then go out and see them with your eyes. Check the appropriate boxes to record your observations. I hope you enjoyed learning about the spring constellations. Please subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And remember, the future is looking up.